Hello guys and welcome to a new video and today I want to start it by sharing my settings because many of you have been asking for it. Also I want to talk about a very useful setting that has been added in the last update. Then after that I'll be sharing one of the hard games I had this week. Let's get started. Now I know you already heard this a lot and not just from me but also from other YouTubers that it's a bad idea to copy someone else's sensitivity but it's true I encourage you to make your own because many players think that there's a magical perfect sensitivity that works for everyone Let me have it I believe that each player has their own perfect sensitivity and only you can find it. Same thing with the HUD layout. Yes, you can copy other players HUD if you're using the same number of fingers. But still, I don't think it's enough. You might have to switch some buttons around according to your playstyle. Moving on to the new setting that has been added recently which is this one right here and it's a solution to a big issue in the game which is the reason that made many players rage and break their devices. And I actually had the pleasure of experiencing it in one of my recent games. So in this game, I went against a lot of strong enemies, but I survived. And in the end, I was against a full squad, and this happens. Getting close to victory. Not only once, but twice. The first time it happened automatically after I used the hook, and the second time I was trying to jump and I ended up climbing again, basically becoming a free kill for the enemy. And I'm not gonna lie, that was so frustrating. I had everything planned and I was positive of winning that game, but all my plans and dreams were shattered by that annoying mechanism. So that's what the new settings for. If you turn it on, you will no longer climb objects around you no matter how many times you jump. And that way, you make sure that you don't die like I did in the previous clip. But climbing objects isn't always bad. It can be useful to gain high ground. And don't worry, you can still climb when you want. All you need to do is stand next to the object, then press and hold the jump button and drag it upwards. And you'll notice that the jump button turns into a vaulting button. But I must warn you that it's much harder to climb doors with this option enabled. And it will take some time to get used to. Now some of you might be asking, Zara, if you claim that this setting is very useful, then why don't you have it enabled? And that's because it comes with a glitch that affects pumped class users like me. So when you turn on the new setting and you're using pumped class, then you won't be able to use the jetpack. As you can see, it keeps draining the nitrogen as soon as it starts filling up. So not only I'm not able to use the jetpack, but I'm not able to jump at all, which is obviously a huge issue. So if you're using pumped class, then you need to wait until they fix it before using the new setting. And now that we're done with the settings, let's move on to the gameplay. And in this game, I'm back to both isolated and playing solo as a squad. And on top of that, it was one of the games I played at midnight. So it was a bit hard and challenging. And I had to play it smartly. I hope you guys enjoy. So we are back to farm and I really love this place as it's mostly crowded with squads. But sadly the lack of loot is a big issue. It just doesn't make any sense. They know that the farm is a hot drop yet they didn't provide a good amount of loot. I mean it really sucks to die because you run out of ammo or meds. And I think they should just increase the amount of loot and let the players have fun. But anyway there were around 3 squads with me here. And luckily I landed in a good spot away from everyone so I had time to get a decent loot.
incoming. The enemies made a big obvious mistake here climbing like that. They basically gave me free kills. And they could have at least smoked the roof of that building. Or maybe climbed all at once. And as I was about to leave the area, another squad was passing by. I believe they were heading to the airdrop, but for some reason and all of a sudden, they turned around and decided to push me instead. I didn't notice this when I was in the actual game, but one of them killed his teammate by destroying the helicopter with a cluster grenade. And in here, I was moving around waiting for the perfect chance to attack, and waiting in case one of them has ninja. And right here, it was my chance to go in. Because first of all, this guy was alone on this side, and second of all, he already wasted many bullets, so he gonna have to reload soon. Then the push to the second enemy was very risky, as I was a bit low on health. But I decided to take my chances and go in before he regroups with his teammate. And in the end, the knock enemy exposed the location of the last member of the squad and I went in for the last kill. Next I went to get the loadout airdrop but I got busy with more enemies. I think there were two squads in this area and I got stuck in between them. Airdrop has been delivered. Be careful, the poltergeist is active. The safe zone is collapsing.
Moving on to the final fight, it was me against a full squad. And I was lucky with the location because the circle was perfectly centered around circus, which means I can get high ground advantage. And I really needed it because these guys were good. And I don't think I would stand a chance facing them all together. I had to wait for them to split up. A sad ending to a good game. Everything was going well, but I choked in the end and I missed many shots. I actually did the math and I found out that I needed two more bullets only to kill that guy. And sadly, he had loadout Fennec with more mag capacity. But still, that's not a good excuse. I should have been able to kill him. Nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. And if you did, a like on your way out would be highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.